In the studio today, we've managed to get our hands on a great new product from our friends over at Mini's Forum. This small form factor iTix motherboard contains a 7945HX 3D CPU, which is essentially an X3D Ryzen chip with 16 cores and 32 threads that can boost up to 5.4 gigahertz. Now this CPU has a 100 watts power budget, which considering the efficiency of these Ryzen processors, makes a small and powerful form factor system for work and play. And this motherboard CPU bundle comes in at less than the price of just a 7950X3D CPU, allowing you to build this powerful yet compact gaming rig without breaking the bank. Hi, this is David at Mash IT. Now this motherboard is coming in at only £579, so as I mentioned earlier, it's less than the price of just the 7950X3D chip on its own when that launched. Now Mini's Forum do also sell a version of this motherboard without the X3D variant for a fair amount cheaper if you want to save even more money. Now I'm going to put a link down in the comment section down below to Mini's Forum if you want to go and check these products out. But before I build with this motherboard, let's take a look around and see what's on it. So as you can see, this is a ITX motherboard as you'd expect, but it is very different from a typical ITX motherboard you'd buy and install the CPU. You can see straight away we've got the CPU on board with this very large heatsink covering quite over a distance on this actual board itself. Now that doesn't come with the fan, you have to supply your own fan, but they do give you 50 millimeters and 25 millimeter fan thickness screws. So you can put on the size you want, depending on the clearance that you need for your heatsink. Now the height of just the heatsink itself is 37 millimeters. So if you had a 50 millimeter fan, you're talking 53 millimeters and a 25 millimeter fan, you're talking 63 millimeters of clearance. And as we move above the heatsink, you can see with this tiny active cooling fan, we've got a very large heatsink, which covers the two Gen 5 M.2 SSD slots. So you can put in two incredibly fast Gen 5 drives in here that we cooled with this active cooler so they're not gonna throttle. Another thing that we have with this motherboard is we've actually got laptop RAM, so you can see the two small sodium slots. Now this can take up to 5,200 megahertz RAM sticks, but we're gonna be testing that later on, and I'm gonna try and put my 128 gig RAM kit in this board. We've also got the CPU fan header for this large fan, but two extra fan headers for your system fans. We've got an audio adapter for your front audio port. We've got the header adapter for all your front panel connectors and a USB 3 adapter. Now sadly, there is no front USB-C header or any starter ports on this board, but with these two Gen 5 slots already on here, I think most people will be covered with that amount of storage. We've got the normal eight pin and 24 pin power for your actual PSU. And at the bottom here, you can see you've got a PCI 5 X16 slot for your graphics cards. Now with regards to the backplate IO, we can see here, obviously we've got a lot of the air being pumped out of the back here, which is quite nice. But below that we do have a USB-C, an HDMI and display port, as well as two USB 3 ports. And up at this end of the board, you can see we've got a 2.5 gigahertz NIC. We've got another two USB ports and the Wi-Fi antennas. And then we've also got uh, your sound card ports. Now this does have a Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2 card built in. So no problems here with the connectivity of this board. Okay, so with the overview of this board out of the way, let's go grab my ITX case and start building into it. And today we're gonna to be using one of my favorite ITX cases, the Fractal Design Terra in the nice jade color scheme. Not only does this case look stunning, but it's really easy to build in and flexible with its adjustable spine. The flip up side panels are a really handy feature and I love that wooden front accent. So I'm gonna build up the motherboard first before installing it into this Terra. Now I'm gonna to need to remove the SSD heatsink and install my drive. And today I'm gonna to be just using a crucial two terabyte P3 Plus. Now the P3 Plus is a really cheap entry level Gen 4 drive. Perfect if you need to keep your budget down. Now I normally use a faster SN850 drive and use the P3 Plus as a games drive. But sadly all my SN850s are in actual use in other projects. So we're gonna just stick with that P3 Plus today. So once we've slid the drive into place and locked it down with a little pin, we then screw that heatsink back over the top of the drives. And then next, I'm gonna install my RAM kit. Now I'm gonna be using my crucial 128 gigabyte 5,600 mega transfers kit. There's two reasons for this. Firstly, I wanted to test if this RAM kit is actually compatible with this Mini's Forum board because they've only tested it with 96 gigabytes of RAM. And secondly, because this CPU is a 16 core powerhouse, this machine is gonna be great for work as well as for play. Now, obviously, if you're building this motherboard just for gaming, I would just forget the 128 gigabit kit and get a 32 gigabyte, because that's all you need for gaming is to save you money. Now, in case you want to use any of the parts that we're gonna be using here today, I'm gonna to put a link to all these parts in the description down below. 
And if you use them, we do get a very small kickback at no cost to you, which really helps keep this channel alive. Okay, with that fluff out of the way, let's go and install the rear IO plate of this motherboard. Now I was surprised that this wasn't installed out of the box, but it's not gonna be complicated. I just removed the Wi-Fi connector nuts, slide that back plate on and screwed in the two tiny screws and replace those Wi-Fi nuts. We also need to add the fan brackets to this heatsink and finally mount the fan of our choice. As I mentioned, both 50 mil and 25 mil screws are provided. Now we've got plenty of room in our Fractal Terra. So with a 37 millimeter heatsink and a 25 millimeter fan, we're looking at a 63 millimeter clearance. And I'm gonna be using a Noctua 25 millimeter thick fan today. Now these fans are expensive, but they've got great performance and they're incredibly quiet. And as this thing is gonna be sitting right next to me on my desk, I really actually enjoy it as making the system as quiet as I possibly can. So with the motherboard built, I'm now gonna mount it into my Fractal Terra case. I need to remove the top panel, and then I need to remove both of the side panels. And this gives us plenty access to install all of the components into the Terra easily. We are now gonna drop in the motherboard and insert the four screws to secure it into place. We then plug in the Gen 4 PCI riser cable supplied with the Terra. We also put in the power switch and the USB 3 header. With regards to the spine, although you could use the default position, it would have put the CPU cooler right up against the side panel and that can cause turbulence. This is a noise I really don't like on my PC cases. I always like to give it at least a five millimeter gap or more if possible. Now we're gonna be using a slim graphics card today, so I can move the position to number three on the spine and this is gonna give us a nice gap on both sides, allowing for whisper quiet gaming. Now this is, as I mentioned, really important to me. I'm also gonna add a 120 millimeter fan to the bottom of the case. Again, I'm gonna use a Noctua at the base of the case, but this time I'm using a slim 50 millimeter as there's not a lot of room when you've got that PSU and all the cables in there. Talking of PSU cables, let's grab our PSU. And today we're gonna to be using the Corsair SF850, the new 2024 model. These PSUs, although expensive, are far and away my favorite SFX PSUs. They're dead quiet, absolutely tiny, efficient, and despite me building hundreds of these small form factor PCs over many years, I've never once had one fail, even when I push them above the actual rated limit. Now, before I screw this PSU into the actual bracket, I'm gonna connect my cables. And as always with small form factor builds, just install the cables that you actually need. In my case, I'm gonna be using the 24 pin and eight pin motherboard cables, and I'm also gonna be using an AMD GPU. So I'm gonna be installing my PCIe cables instead of the flaming hot 12 VHPWR cables that we all love. Next, install the PSU bracket to that PSU and screw that bracket into place. Make sure you plug your power cable into the PSU and turn on the PSU switch so you're not scratching your head later on down the line. Plug in the motherboard cables now and then pass through your two graphics card cables through to the other side ready for when you install your graphics card. I also at this point tidied up the cables, making sure that none are snagging on that base exhaust fan. Now I already mentioned we're gonna be using an AMD for the graphics card, and today I'm gonna to be using the PowerColor Reaper 9070 XT. This has to be the most friendly small form factor card in the 90 XT range, and it makes it very easy to work with in ITX builds. Just look how much room is left inside this Terra case once we've installed our actual Reaper card. This is great for airflow and acoustics. So with that graphics card inserted into place, we're gonna plug into our PCI power connectors. We're then gonna screw it down with the thumb screws provided. And that's pretty much it. We just tidy away the last of the cables so that we can replace our side panels and then pop on the top panel and slot it back into place, locking it shut. And voila, what an easy build. So I've installed the Windows 11 and I've got the drivers for this motherboard direct from Mini's forum website. It was all very painless apart from the 10 million Windows updates. So let's now move it over to my gaming desk fire it up so we can actually start testing it for gaming. Firing up some of my favorite games on my Alienware ultra-wide OLED monitor was an incredible experience. The 7945HX3D with the 9070XT cuts through everything at its native 3440 by 1440 resolution. And this Terra build is so quiet, especially with that 120 mm Noctua on that CPU heatsink. I also wanna give a special mention to the PowerColor 9070XT Reaper. Although this is a tiny card, great for small form factor PCs, it can pull its 300 watt load whilst remaining cool and quiet and give incredible gaming performance. AMD have really hit it out the park this year. Now I wanted to test the CPU against my 7800X3D system that I previously used as my gaming rig. I'm running a couple of CPU benchmarks shows just how well the 16 core mobile CPU dominates the 7800X3D's eight cores we can almost see an almost 70% improvement in multi-core scores, meaning that this is an excellent option for work. 
It also scores slightly better than the 7800X3D in single core too. And also note that this 7945HX CPU maxed out at 100 watts, whereas my undervolted 7800X3D still consumes 80 watts. Running a few game benchmarks at 1080p to fully test these CPUs, and the 7800X3D does pull slightly ahead. Though to be fair, I am using a 6400 MB fast RAM kit against the 5200 MB transfer 128 gigabit kit that I've used in the BD790i X3D motherboard. Now, Black Myth Wukong only showed a one frame per second difference between these two CPUs, but Cyberpunk had a much larger 6% difference, though both were running at well over 200 frames per second. Lastly, I wanted to test the new June demo as it looks pretty CPU heavy, and the first two scenes were within one frames per second difference of each other, but the last sandworm scene, the 7800X3D took the lead and scored a good 10% difference. But overall, I am incredibly impressed by this BD790i X3D motherboard, especially the performance to the cost ratio, and just how efficient the chip in this motherboard is. Now I'm also incredibly impressed with just how well this Terra build turned out, using that slim 9070 XT Reaper and that large 120mm heatsink and fan, produced an incredibly quiet system that I enjoy using on my desk without noise cancelling headphones. Now as usual I'd love to know what you guys think of this build and this motherboard, so pop it in the actual comment section down below and I will get back to you. And lastly, thanks for watching.